Hey everybody, it's Charlie. This is going to be my video for the ending of Fantastic Beasts 2 Crimes of Grindelwald. They made some huge changes or additions, I should say, to Harry Potter canon. So I'll try to explain what they did and how they're misleading you a little bit. I think they're not giving us the whole story. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos. And obviously, careful for spoilers if you have not seen the movie yet. We have to talk about a couple really big plot twists. So here we go. At the end of the movie, Ezra Miller's character, Credence, is with Grindelwald. Grindelwald tells him his true identity, and that's the huge change, introducing a brand new character that has a lot of big longtime Harry Potter fans scratching their heads about how it could possibly exist. So during the movie, Grindelwald makes this big deal about how Credence is so important to him because he's the only person who can defeat Dumbledore, and Dumbledore is the last thing standing between him and taking over the world. And the way he tells that story is really important too. He says, oh, I am certain he's the only person that can defeat Dumbledore. Like he's been sitting on a really big secret this whole time that goes all the way back to the original Harry Potter films when we learned about Dumbledore's past. He tells Credence that his true name is Aurelius Dumbledore and he's Dumbledore's long lost brother. Then tells him the same story about the phoenix that Dumbledore told earlier in the film about how his grandfather told him a story about how a phoenix would always come to a Dumbledore in need. So it's a marker of their family birthright and evidence that he's not lying about him being a Dumbledore, part of their family. But Grindelwald is slippery. He'll say anything that he wants, twist the truth, omit things about the story in order to get credence to his side. So I think he's only telling a half truth. He is related to Dumbledore, but he's not his brother. So this will make more sense when you think about the origin story for the Dumbledore family that you learned during the original Harry Potter story. But just to clarify, the reason why Grindelwald needs Credence so badly isn't so much that he's related to Dumbledore, it's because of the Obscurus. The Obscurus is what makes Credence so powerful. Have you any idea how dangerous it is? You're Aberforth, Dumbledore's brother. You know what to do. Where have you sent her? You'll see. Enough. That's your sister Ariana, isn't it? She died very young, didn't she? My brother sacrificed many things, Mr. Potter, on his journey to find power, including Ariana. And she was devoted to him. He gave her everything. But time. Thank you, Mr. Dumbledore. So getting into the idea of Credence and where he fits into the Dumbledore family tree, here's the problem. We know from Harry Potter canon that Dumbledore had one brother, Aberforth, who we met during the series, and a sister, Ariana Dumbledore. There were only three of them, and they're relatively close to the same age. Dumbledore himself, in this movie, is about 30 years older than Credence. So he's just way too old for him to be his natural born brother. Dumbledore's father actually went to Azkaban after an incident with his sister when she was six years old. So he wasn't even around to have another child with his mother. We know though that Grindelwald spent a lot of time in Godric's Hollow with Dumbledore when they were young before Ariana died. So Grindelwald would have known Ariana and everything that was going on with their family because he was so close with Dumbledore. There was the whole subplot about the blood pact. So remember, that Grindelwald and Dumbledore were like really close allies, friends, more than friends as he says, and they were supposed to be the two most powerful wizards of the age. Dumbledore tells a story during the film when he's talking to Lita Lestrange about his greatest regret was not loving his sister enough. During the original Harry Potter films, Harry Potter learns that Dumbledore blames himself for his sister's death because of his selfishness. Quick recap about what happened to Ariana Dumbledore, because I think she's very important to this story. When she was six years old, she was taken advantage of by a couple local muggles while living in Godric's Hollow. In her rage to get revenge, she hulked out on them with her magic unable to control it. She's a little girl, remember? She sort of loses her mind and the Dumbledores hide her away from the world for the rest of her life. Think about that story though, the way she hulks out, loses control of her magic, it sounds a lot like Credence in his Obscurus. So, early theory, 
when she was attacked by those boys, she developed an obscurus just like him, and that's the reason why the Dumbledores hid her away, because it was so dangerous and so powerful, they didn't want to turn her over because they were afraid that she would be thrown in Azkaban and she was just a little girl and they wanted to protect her. Later, when Dumbledore was getting ready to finish school, he was supposed to be the next Merlin, the greatest wizard in the history of the world. So he had this bright future ahead of him, but he was also supposed to become his sister's guardian. Sometime around then, Grindelwald came back to Godric's Hollow to work with Dumbledore and compel him to leave with Grindelwald so that the two of them could be together and go pursue greatness. Because Grindelwald was also supposed to be one of the greatest wizards of the age. So he was like, come on, let's go be great together. We're the most powerful wizards in the world. We can do anything that we want. The books state that his sister died trying to stop a three-way battle between Dumbledore, his brother, and Grindelwald over whether or not Dumbledore would leave with Grindelwald to pursue that glory. So after she died, soon after, he took the job at Hogwarts and swore off his pursuit of power because of his great regret. Like he just blamed himself for everything that happened to her. So big theory about the true origin of Credence, I think that Credence is actually Dumbledore's sister's son, making him Dumbledore's nephew. He inherited Ariana's Obscurus. We also got the flashback to the boat where Lita Lestrange swaps her brother with Credence in that crib. We see the woman who was caring for Credence. We don't know who she was, but she could have been someone working for the Dumbledores trying to take Ariana's son, Credence, to America to keep him safe. But I think the big twist here, especially highlighted by the fact that the phoenix appears, is that Credence is Dumbledore's blood, but not necessarily his brother. There was also this really creepy subplot with Lita Lestrange's father. He would use the Imperius curse on women that he wanted to have children with. Once he got the son that he wanted, he cast all the women aside. So very creepy, but thematically the idea that Ariana had a tragic child under mysterious circumstances sort of fits with that. But just to be clear, if you haven't read all the Harry Potter novels, there is no mention of Dumbledore having another brother in the books. It's just the three of them. They're vastly older than Credence, so it just it makes sense that secretly he's going to be Ariana's son. The big question, though, is, is that if Dumbledore knew that his sister had a son, then why doesn't he know about Credence? Maybe he also thinks that the baby died when the boat sank. But either way, I just feel like it's going to be a big revelation in one of the future movies. Like, they're related, but not exactly how you think. So let me know in the comments, do you think that Grindelwald is lying to Credence and he's really the son of Ariana Dumbledore, Dumbledore's sister? If you guys didn't know, too, there's a Wizarding World TV series that I believe Warner Brothers is developing for their new streaming service that will debut sometime next year. I don't know if the Harry Potter TV show will debut next year, maybe 2020, but the streaming service will debut next year. If we get any more info about that, I will totally do a video. While you wait for everything, click here for my non-spoilery breakdown of all the early Aquaman reviews and click here for my brand new Game of Thrones Season 8 trailer. Thank you so much for watching. Everybody stay awesome. I'll see you guys tonight.